Good evening, everybody. How are you doing today? How was your long weekend? Did you do anything interesting? I hope you did. Um, well, it is time to start the class. I I don't know if you're already at home or if you're still driving or having dinner. Okay. I'm going to start sharing the presentation I already sent to you through the WhatsApp group. Okay, so uh, I think that today we will finish the section number three. I only have Miguel, Marilyn, Mario, and Julissa. Um, I see here that Julissa is, is going to be like listener today, but I don't know about Miguel, Marilyn, and Mario. If you are ready or if you need uh, time, you're driving, you're having dinner. Hi, good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Are you at home or are you still driving? I'm at home and I'm ready today. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, I am drinking coffee. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To get energy. Yeah, that's right. That's perfect. Awesome. Okay. Well, what we have been practicing in section number three is basically indirect request. And, um, and I have this reading exercise to help you a little bit more with this topic. Um, as you see, it's the topic of the reading is requests that get results. And we have a question here. It's just like a kind of the boy or the man is asking for something to the lady. A volunteer to read that question. Do you have? Okay, the question said, do you have $2,000 for a cup of coffee? I want to drink it in Brazil. That's a crazy request. <laughs> and that is a, a direct request. Now we have this reading, a um, request that get results. Is there a volunteer to read? Me, teacher. There are. Hello, teacher. Yes. Yes, it there are. Yes. Okay. There are many different ways of making quizzes. For example, if someone wants to borrow a dollar, he or she can say, would you lend me a dollar? Do you have a dollar? You don't have a dollar, do, do you? Continue, teacher. Yes, please. <clears throat> How does a person know which request to use? Language? Researches have suggested that speakers must make several important decisions. First, 
They must consider the other person's feeling because requests can sometimes cause embarrassment to both the list. listener will accept the request. He or she will prob probably use a less formal request. However, if the speaker thinks the listener may decline the request, he or she will probably use a fairly formal request. The listener then has to make a choice either to accept or re refuse. refuse. Refuse the request. request. If he or she refuse, then both the speaker and the listener mind might be embarrassed. In addition, the speaker must decide how well they know the person, the person they are requesting something from and choose a suitable, it's okay teacher, suitable. It's okay. Okay, suitable question. If the speaker knows the listening listener well, <clears throat> one of the several types of requests can be used. For example, make a statement with need. I need a dollar. Use an imperative. Please lend me a dollar. Use a question. Do you have a dollar? Okay, teacher. I don't know if we continue. If you're willing to, you can continue. Okay. If the speaker doesn't know the listener well, one of the several types of requests can be used in test. In test. What is the pronounced this word, teacher? Instead. Instead. Okay. Use it instead. For example, ask about ability. Could can you lend me a dollar? Be polite, use may. May I borrow a dollar? Ask for permission. Would it be okay if I borrow, borrow a dollar? Express curiosity. I wonder if I could borrow a dollar? State the request negative. I don't suppose you could lend me a dollar. Apologize. I hope you don't mind my skin asking, but could I borrow a dollar? Give a, give a hint. I don't have any cash on me. Knowing how to make requests means knowing different types of requests as well as when each type of request is appropriate. Excellent. Thank you so much for reading, Martial. And tell me people... if I, mm -hmm. if I <clears throat> tell me if I have any word uh, that bad pronunciation. Uh, no, you did not pronounce any word incorrectly. And just with instead, you ask, you ask me that for the pronunciation instead, then everything is okay. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you, Tito. Okay. Um, as you can see here with this example, I wanted you to sh I, I wanted to show you that um, there is not a, a specific way to make the indirect request or uh, you can do it in different ways. As you could see, the same thing. Um, we are, um, we, we need money. And we see here 10 different ways to um, ask for that money, request for someone to borrow us that money. Uh, as you can see, for example, the number one, uh, make a statement with need, I need a dollar. 
maybe I could use that with, I don't know, with my parents or my brother, I need a dollar. <laughs> so you cannot ask that, that in that way to any person, right? Uh, it, depending on the person, you will use um, the most appropriate way um, to do your request. Entonces, esto es para ya como para que ah, descansen un poquito. Ok, Abigail nos dice que aún va en el bus. Ok, Abigail. Ajá, como para aliviarnos un poco, ¿verdad? Para que vean, eh, según la lectura, lo que acaban de ver aquí con ejemplos y todo, estamos pidiendo un dólar en 10 diferentes formas. Haciendo una statement, como decir, necesito un dólar. Es bastante directo, ¿verdad? Usando un imperativo, siempre poniéndole please al principio como para hacerlo un poquito mm, más eh, cortés. Please, lend me a dollar. O utilizando una pregunta directa, do you have a dollar? Usando el, el auxiliar de habilidad, ¿verdad? Para saber si la persona está en condiciones o no, ¿verdad? Could or can you lend me a dollar? ¿Puedes? Uh -huh. eh, siendo más cortés, se utilizaría may. May I borrow a dollar? Eh, si fuera como pidiéndole permiso, estaría bien si te digo que me prestes un dólar. Uh, would it be okay if I were a dollar? Eh, haciéndolo como de una forma curiosa, me pregunto si I wonder if I could borrow a dollar. Um, stay uh, request negatively. También se pueden hacer los requests de una forma negativa, aunque no es muy común como lo tienen ahí. I don't suppose you could lend me a dollar. Okay, so it's like, no es muy común, pero se puede hacer también en forma negativa. Eh, apologize es uh, como ya dice, como una forma de igual de disculpándose, ¿verdad? Eh, decir, espero que no te moleste si te pido que me prestes un dólar. <laughs> um, o darle como una pista, give a hint. Eh, decir, ay, no tengo nada de dinero. <laughs> Esperando que la persona se ofrezca, ¿verdad? Entonces, si se dan cuenta, son 10 formas diferentes de pedir el dólar indirectamente y algunas bien directas. Pero nos hemos estado estudiando las formas indirectas de hacerlo y ahí ven que se puede hacer como de diferentes maneras. Eh, no hay como una como bien específica, ¿verdad? Decir, así lo tienen que hacer. De es dependiendo de la situación, hay diferentes formas de hacerlo. Y si lo estamos haciendo como de manera indirecta, lo único que tenemos que tener en cuenta es que eh, el indirect request lleva eh, estructura de oración, no de pregunta. Por lo tanto, no vamos a utilizar el auxiliar do or does en ninguna forma de ese auxiliar. Es lo único que tenemos que tener en cuenta al momento de trabajar o de hacer un request eh, indirecto, así como me pregunto si o podrías o tenés idea de tal cosa, qué es lo que estamos haciendo ahorita. Uh, con esta lectura, espero que nos ayude más. Eh, ya habíamos estado trabajando con esto anteriormente en, la, en, las, eh, en el material anterior y lo habían estado haciendo muy bien. Entonces, um, tenemos acá, uh, read the article, que ya lo leímos, pero puede que necesitemos volverlo a leer por los que van entrando, por eh, los que se perdieron la lectura. Podemos leerlo otra vez. Eh, check if each request is less formal or more formal. Then write the correct number uh, from the article 1 to 10 for each type of request. Eh, va, podemos hacer la primera que dice close the door ¿qué piensan? ¿es less formal o more formal decirle a alguien close the door? ¿qué piensan de close the door? less formal 
Less formal. Excelente, Víctor. Eh, less formal. Entonces, chequearíamos less formal. Y en tipo, tenemos que ver aquí el tipo. ¿Qué tipo de request es? Sería un imperativo. Quizás el, el número dos. Close. Ajá. Uh, uh -huh. Sería un imperativo. Entonces aquí escribiríamos el número dos. Sería tipo imperative. Porque close the door, eh, los imperativos se caracterizan por que no llevan un sujeto. Se le da la orden directamente a la persona. Close the door. Eh, es una orden, es un command. Eh, y pues se puede suavizar con please. Poner a please al principio y decirle please close the door. O close the door, please ponerlo al final. Entonces, tipo sería imperative, número dos, ponerle el dos del imperative, y así eh, vamos a ir haciendo, basándonos en la lectura, ok, remember, y aquí lo pueden ver, o lo pueden este, eh, a, estar haciendo, bueno, yo voy a dejar la pantallita acá, en el ejercicio, y ustedes lo pueden ir respondiendo en su cuaderno, y en el teléfono o en otro eh, dispositivo que tengan conectado, pueden ir viendo ustedes eh, la lectura, si desean leerla de nuevo. Igual, pues no creo, no, no nos hemos memorizado, ¿verdad? Los tipos, si es uno, dos, tres, cuatro, eh, el cuatro es para abilities, o no nos hemos memorizado, así entonces van a tener que estar consultando la lectura y para responder acá. Eh, Creo que si es formal, less formal o more formal, sí lo podemos hacer sin ver la lectura. Pero el tipo sí, necesitamos la lectura para saber qué tipo es y poner el número de acuerdo a eso, así como hicimos la número uno. Que le voy a dar tiempo para que completen esto. Ah. Yes. Listen to me. Eh, hizo grupo. No. Es que se me, se me salió. No, we're going to work in the main section. Aquí vamos a practicar. Ok, ok. okay.
Teacher, una pregunta. ¿En qué, ¿En qué número de páginas está eso? Ahorita estamos... No, en el folleto no está esto, solo en el PowerPoint. Ajá. En la presentación. Esta la tenían desde la semana pasada, pero también se la no podía mandar. Nada. No sé qué pasó. Vamos a ver. Breve ahí, sí, si no lo voy a escribir en el chat. Ah, perdón, teacher, que yo tenía, tenía este, el volumen bajo, ya le subí. Ok, qué? ok. Este está en la presentación, en el PowerPoint. En el PowerPoint. Ajá. Ok. Ah, PowerPoint. Mm. Eh, Tienen que leer a, eh, la primera diapositiva. Tengo que ingresar ahí, ¿verdad? No en el folleto que se imprime, sino que... No, no en el folleto. Esto okay. ya luego vamos a trabajar solo del folleto. Ok, ok, gracias.
Have you finished or do you need more time? Teacher, sorry. Uh, where it says type, we are going to write number. Yes, the number. Uh -huh. The number. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, for example, the number one, they say close the door. The number one is less formal. Uh huh, it's less formal and the type. According to the reading, an infinite, uh, sorry, an imperative would be number two. Mm -hmm. Sería número dos, porque es una en forma de imperativo. El tipo de la uno sería number two, imperative. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you finished or do you need more time? Give me more time, please. A couple okay. of minutes, please. Yeah, no worries.
Hello, teacher. Hello. Could you tell me if I'm okay? Mm -hmm. uh, number one, I think this is type one. Number two, you says number two, uh, type two. Hmm. Number two, you think it's type two? Yes. Oh, it's really cold in here. According to the reading, the type two, um, el type two is que? Type two is use imperative. Imperative, ajá. Uh -huh. Los imperatives tienen una característica y es que no tienen sujeto. Y en esta sí tenemos uh -huh. un sujeto que dice it. It yeah. is. Okay. Entonces esta estaría eh, como giving a hint. Sería la, la 10. Number 10, give a hint. It's really cold in here. Es como dándole una pista, solo como para invitarlo a que le baje. Por ejemplo, si estamos en una oficina y digo, it's cold in here. Quiero decir, como dándole una idea que necesito que le baje al aire o que le suba, no sé, que se ponga más calientito. Uh -huh. Entonces, sí, la número dos sería type 10. Give a hint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Type 10. Mm -hmm. What do you have? In, is it formal or less formal? What do mm, you think? Less formal. Less formal. Mm -hmm. That is less formal. And number three, could you possibly move your car? Is less formal or more formal? It's more formal. Aha, uh -huh. it is more formal. And what type is it? Number four. Excellent, it's number, number four. four. Mm -hmm. Number, yes, it's type number. four. Excellent. Yeah. And number, number four. Aha. Uh -huh. May I borrow your dictionary? I think it's type five. Yes, it is correct. Is type five. Is it less more formal, formal or more formal? More formal. Excellent. More formal. Number five. I was wondering, wondering if you could help me with this assignment. Is it formal In or? In this case, um, Is more formal and type formal, seven. Type seven, excellent. More formal, type seven. Do you want to check number six? I need somehow moving to my new apartment. Mm -hmm. Is less formal or more formal? I think it's less formal. Less formal, uh huh. And what type is it? Um, yeah. I need. Number. Number one. Excellent. Number one. Está haciendo un statement. Es una oración con need. I need. Uh -huh. sí. Type one. Excellent. Number okay. seven. <clears throat> Number seven. I'm sorry, but I can't stand loud music. I think it's less formal. Mm -hmm. 
yes. type, type four. Is it okay? Um, 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 la type four es para preguntar por habilidad, con quién o cuál. Ajá. Ajá, entonces otra posibilidad. Number five, be polite. Eh, con, be polite es con models. Uh, y aquí no uh, estamos usando model. Apologize, no. Yes, Aymara, apologize. Sería type nine, apologize. Uh -huh. Se está disculpando, dice, lo siento, pero no soporto la música. Al... Uh -huh. Apologize, number nine. And uh, okay. number eight. Number eight. It's type three. Yes, it's type three. Excellent. Type three. <clears throat> and less formal. Less, less formal, uh -huh. it's really direct. So excellent. You just got to like, uh, you were doubting, but yes, correct. <laughs> so nice. Now, um, getting back to your material, uh, I think that this is going to be easier now. Nos va a ser un poco más fácil ahora um, hacer con los utilizar indirect questions. Uh, you have this on page 28. Lo tienen en la 28 del material que es, descargaron de la plataforma. Uh, look at the examples in the box. Uh, decimos que las indirect questions se utilizan para pedir algo o para preguntar cosas de una manera más formal. Uh, Es lo mismo, expresando lo mismo que en una pregunta directa, pero no presenta el orden que normalmente llevan las preguntas, sino que presenta un orden como de oración. Eh, tenemos primero, I wonder, eh, la número uno sería la indirecta. I wonder if you receive a copy of the analysis for the production process. Uh -huh. Esta pregunta es como me pregunto si recibiste una copia del análisis del proceso de producción. No es directamente una pregunta. El, 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 si ven el orden que lleva, no es el orden de la pregunta. La pregunta directa sería la que está en el 1B. Did you receive a copy of the analysis for the process? So we have did you. Did you? Ahí tenemos una forma de, del auxiliar, ¿verdad? El auxiliar, si lo ven arriba en la indirecta, no se usan auxiliares y no lleva orden de pregunta. Eh, y tenemos otro ejemplo. I'd like to know if the quality control step should be repeated once the product is finished. Esa sería como la, la indirecta. Como decir, me gustaría saber si el control, el paso del control de calidad debería ser repetido una vez que el producto esté finalizado. Ok. Eh, la forma directa sería empezando con should. Should the quality control step be repeated once the product is finished? Esa es una pregunta directa. Eh, luego tenemos más ejemplos al otro lado. Marta. Would you mind telling us if the cost to run a second quality control will go very high? Um, ahí estamos ya usando would you mind. Igual, ven que no lleva un orden de pregunta. Eh, las, la 1B ya sí es la pregunta directa. Would the cost to run a second quality control go very high? Esa es una pregunta ya directa. Tenemos otro ejemplo, la 2A, Greg, 
could you find out if the production manager is around? Okay. Y la, eh, comparemosla con la directa. Is the production manager around? Eh, it says, notice that if introduced in direct question, which we will have sentence order. La, la pregunta indirecta se eh, la introduce el if, el condicional, el si, sí, el if. Eh, y tenemos un orden de oración, sujeto, más verbo. Y nos dicen que los verbos auxiliares como do, does, or did no se usan en indirect questions, lo que decíamos, ¿verdad? Eh, con respecto a la puntuación, when the introductory segment is a phrase, the resulting statement with the indirect questions would take a period and not a question mark at the end. Uh, when the introductory segment is a question, the resulting statement with the direct question will take a question mark at the end. Okay. Y aquí nos dice sobre la puntuación. Cuando el, el segmento que introduce es una frase completa, eh, no vamos a poner question mark. Pero si el, el segmento eh, que introduce es una eh, question word, eh, entonces sí vamos a poner el question mark aquí al final. Um, por ejemplo, I wonder, si ven aquí, I wonder if you receive a copy. Es como, es, es una frase, me pregunto si tal cosa. Luego, el otro ejemplo, I'd like to know, me gustaría saber, etcétera, etcétera. Tampoco lleva el, el, el signo de pregunta. Pero aquí que estamos empezando eh, con, el, introduciendo con una pregunta, would you mind or could you find out, eso sí van, van a llevar el signo de pregunta. Eso es con respecto a puntuación. Eh, ahora, Use the introductory phrases and the questions to write indirect yes no questions and compare answers with a partner. Vamos a utilizar la frase introductoria que está ahí. Por ejemplo, can you tell me? Is the machinery capable of performing these processes? Eh, si lo pasamos a indirect, nos quedaría can you tell me if, en vez de is, vamos a poner if. If the machinery is, y ahí si lo ponemos así, if the machinery is capable of performing this process. Y así nos quedaría como in, indirecta. Este. Without question mark. Ahí sí llevaría, porque estamos introduciéndolo con una question word. Uh -huh. Porque siempre dejamos el can you tell me. Question word could be. Uh, Puede ser your, would you question mind. Question word is can. Can, could, would you can mind. Can you tell me. Uh -huh. I'd like to know. No, it's a question word. Question no. phrase. No. Is that no? I'd like to know.
Have you finished? I finished, teacher. Okay. Let's check what you have. Can you read your sentences, please? Um, may I share, share my screen, teacher? Yes, let me allow the feature. I'm going to stop sharing. And allow you to share. Okay, now you can share. Let me check. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Are okay, teacher? Number two? Yes, uh, the only one thing I'd like to know if they're okay, is if for is and better if. Uh -huh. I'd like to know. If the if manufacturer the will buy new machinery to the pro, to produce, creo que ahí le corrigió quizás porque era to produce y le ajá to produce. Produce your orders. Sin la THE to produce. Hay que quitarle la THE porque es to produce. Uh -huh. I'd like to know if the manufacturer will buy the new machinery to produce or order some time. Excelente. Es correcto. Y yes, sin este, 
um, sin uh, question mark. Excelente. Question mark. Yes, está correcto. Muy bien. Number three. Do you know if the schedule and production control form is complete? Ajá. Eso está bien. Un detalle nada más que esa, como está, eh, la estamos introduciendo con, eh, con pregunta. Con el, el, ajá. Entonces. Es así. Y lo único, el detalle del question mark. Pero es correcto, gramaticalmente correcta la indirect request. I'd like to find out if the operation plan. Excelente. Solo una cosa, como no llevamos auxiliar aquí, entonces el verbo al estar hablando de un plan, eh, aplicamos lo de la ah, regla no. del... Ajá, ya me comprendió. Describes. Excelente, correcto. I'd like to find out if the operation plan describes the process parameters. Excelente. Igual, esa no necesitaría eh, question mark porque está haciendo, se, eh, estamos introduciéndolo con una frase. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea if we will go for a small batch or much? Ajá. Uh -huh. En esa, ¿qué cree? ¿Necesitamos el question mark o no? I think, yes. Yes, yes, ahí sí, el único detalle, eso sí. Excelente. Mm -hmm. And the last one, I was wondering if you received the course of the raw material raw provider. Material. Excellent, yes, excellent job, Magdiel. Thank you so much for Thank sharing. You. You're welcome to share. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing, my dear. Uh, is there anybody else? Alguien tiene algo diferente? Quiere que chequemos? Or is any question, doubts? No? Muy bien. Uh, me alegro que pues ya pues eh, parece que ya hoy sí. <laughs> ya hoy sí, verdad? Ya, ya, ya tenemos bien claro cómo hacer los indirect requests. Eh, muy bien. Uh, vamos a chequear asistencia eh, y luego vamos a seguir con el contenido de la clase, del material en este. Eh, ya vamos a, esto era ya para finalizar con los indirect requests y me alegra pues que ya, ya no, no hay mayor problema para hacerlos. Esos temas son bastante avanzados, entonces se va poniendo un poquito más intenso. Así es que, pues, eh, pero no, no, no es como para decir no lo van. Claro que sí, es, se han demostrado que sí lo pueden lograr. Y importante, ¿verdad? La participación, este, estar siempre pendientes de la clase. Y pues ahí vamos a ir avanzando poco a poco. Eh, vamos a chequear asistencia, entonces, veamos con Abigail Elizabeth. Present teacher. Thank you. Abigail Mejía. Present. Thank you, Abigail. Um, Carlos Alberto Castro. Carlos Alberto Castro. Uh, Carlos Emilio Coto. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Present teacher. Thank you. Cecia Noemí Ramos. Thank you, Cecia. Thank you for writing in the chat. Francisco Ernesto, where he has internet issues. Person Alexis.
Gertrudis Aymara. Present. Thank you. Hazel Parmesa. Julissa Yamilet. Thank you, Julissa. Thank you for writing in the chat. Carla Ivania. Present teacher. Thank you, Carla. Um, Luis Javier. Present, Miss. Thank you so much. Magdiel Esaú. Present teacher. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra. Present. Thank you. Eh, Mario Ernesto. Mario Ernesto. Melanie Alexandra. Present teacher. Thank you, Mario. Melanie Alexandra. Present. Thank you. Samuel Antonio. Santos Cristina. Present teacher. Thank you. Victor Noé. Present teacher. Thank you, Victor. All right. We are ready to continue then. Okay, then in the next page on page 29 of your material, we have a vocabulary exercise. And in this, uh, we are going to uh, see the terms and then the description of the terms and these are related to the production of uh, shampoo. Uh, we have to match their uh, steps to the corresponding task. We have number one, mix. Number two, quality control. Number three, filter. Four, capping. Five, labeling. Six, packaging. And then we have um, the, the task for the description of the process. After the batch is approved, the shampoo is poured in the right amount into the empty bottles. The conveyor belt takes the bottles to the machine where the labels and the ingredients and brand name is stuck on them. The bottles are moved to another machine that puts a cup on every bottle and twists them tight. All the raw materials are poured in a batch and mixed. The bottles are put into boxes and are ready to be sent to the stores. A sample is sent to be analyzed to ensure it meets the specification. So let's do the first one together. Mix. Number one, mix. What is the description of that step? What is the description of mix? All the raw materials are deposited in a bar. Uh-huh, excellent, Mario. So we would put number one here. All the raw materials are put in the uh, batch and mixed. Okay, good. So you can work on your material. It, I think it's easier. Creo que es más fácil desde su material. And you will find this exercise on page 
finished Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Do you want to share what you did or you want to read them? I read. Okay, perfect. Uh, mix uh, all the raw materials are folded in a pot and mix it. Uh huh, that's correct. Quality control has some percent to be analyzed to be ensured it meets a specification. That is correct, excellent. Filter uh, after the batch is approved. The shampoo is poured in the right amount into the empty bottle. Perfect. Uh, capping. The bottles are moved another machine that puts a cap on very bottle as twist them like. Tight. Excellent. Uh -huh. uh, labeling. To convey your Bell takes the bottles to the machine where the labels with ingredients and the brand name in took of them. That's right. Packing. Packing. Pack packing. The bottles are put into boxes and are ready to be sent to the store. Excellent. Very well done, Maria. Thank you so much for uh, helping us. And yes, all the answers are correct. I hope that everybody has the same answers since they are correct. And uh, well, that's uh, about this exercise. Now, it is, uh, to, for this exercise in building vocabulary, we um, the suggested activity is for you to go online and find out about those key terms uh, that are related to the an assembly line. Uh, for example, conveyor belt, bulk production, manual labor, and machine hours. Uh, we're not going to do this in groups since um, I think it's, a, it's, uh, it's not worth it. So we're going to do it individually. So you can go ahead and uh, you can go to maybe uh, the Cambridge Dictionary because yes, uh, I do not recommend the translator. Um, so you can look for those definitions in the dictionary. What's a conveyor belt? Uh, what does bulk production mean? Uh, man manual labor or machine hours? 
I'll give you five minutes for this. If you are ready before that time, you can let me know.
Okay, you ready? What did you find for a conveyor belt? I volunteer to share um, the key terms definition. For example, conveyor belt. What did you find? What is a conveyor belt? Thank you so much, Maria. Uh, conveyor belt. The main purpose of a conveyor system is to move objects from one location to another. The design allows for movement objects of objects that are too heavy or too bulky for humans to carry by hand. Excellent. That's correct. The definition of conveyor belt is exactly that. It's um it's very used in um in industry, right? To move things from one thing to another is similar to a uh, um to um uh the treadmill, the one that we used to walk in, it doesn't have an end. So yes, thank you so much. What about bulk production? Bulk production? Nobody has it? Okay. Um, yes, Mario? Uh, bueno, es como... Como la línea de ensamblaje, este, uh, bulk production refers to the manufacturing products process of producing many identical products using assembly line, assembly line methods and automated machi machinery. Various industries, including clothing production, use the mass production method. Aha, uh -huh. so yes, exactly right. Thank you so much. So, yeah, so this is like uh, batches. Um, or producing uh, in a big amount and they are um, in batches. It's like a, como lotes, producción por lotes, por, por cantidad de grandes. That's for production. Thank you so much. Uh, manual labor. Well, for manual labor and machine hours, I think that it's a like a kind of friendly. It's easy to understand those um, definitions. It's um, maybe we don't need a dictionary, <laughs> but yes, we have a couple of exercises on the platform that are related to vocabulary. And let me see about attendance. Um, I was just missing. Let's see, Carlos Alberto Castro, Carlos Emilio Cotto, you joined us recently, right? Francisco, que creo que no se pudo conectar. Gerson Alexis, tampoco se conectó. Ni Samuel Antonio. Okay. All right, that will be it for today. Uh, thank you, Carlos Emilio, um, for joining us. And uh, yes, it's basically only Carlos. Thank you so much. So see you tomorrow for more. Try to work on the platform. Thank you so much, teacher. Thank you so much. Good night.